first reading is from Psalm, Psalm 130. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness. Therefore, you are feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And if the word I put my, and in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. O Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full of redemption. He himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. And from John 11, verses 34 to 45. Where have you laid him, he asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him? But someone, some of them said, could not he have opened the eyes of this blind man and have kept this man from dying? As Jesus once more deeply moved, he came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believed you could see the glory of God? So they took away the stone then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, they may, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. Therefore, many of the Jews who had come to visit Mary and had seen what Jesus did, put their faith in him. Here endeth the reading of God's holy word. So this week, as we move into our final sermon in our series on renewal and repentance during the Lenten season, and next week we're going to move into our preparations for Holy Week, but that is next week. So this week we pause to consider how we've grown or even perhaps changed over Lent this year. Now I pray that you have all grown in your faith. I pray that you've grown closer to Jesus during this time. Maybe you're feeling wonderful at the end of this season, and maybe you're already making plans of how you can continue to grow after Lent ends. That is where I hope you find yourself this year. Now, we all have gifts that God has given to us. We often talk about these gifts and the idea of being spiritual gifts that we are blessed with. But God blesses us with physical gifts as well. Some of us are strong. Some of us have great stamina. Some of us have perfect eyesight. Some of us once had all of those things, but we don't quite have them anymore, and that's okay as well. <laughs> I, have a, I have the gift of great hearing. I can hear the smallest sound usually very clearly. 
I'm especially good at hearing a child mutter something under their breath as they are walking away from me. When I am hunting, I'm, I will almost always hear an animal before I see them. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, Pastor, I have to question your ability to hear because I've had conversations with you before and told you that you need to do something and you forgot to do it. Well, know that I have good hearing and I did hear you, but though my hearing might be good, my short-term memory is not. And while I recognize that having good hearing is a blessing, there is also a price to be paid that comes with that ability. Since I am able to hear things well, I am also very sensitive to loud sounds, especially in confined spaces. My job at the dance competitions uh, is to sit and watch all the dances and keep track of the number that they're on so I can tell our dance team when they need to get ready to come to the stage. And that's great, except after a few dances, I usually have to step out because it's so loud in there with the music. The other place that I really struggle is in the car. I have found that if things become too loud, I become a wreck and I feel like I'm going to cause one because of it. So when the kids get too loud in the car, usually the conversation goes something like this. Guys, it's getting a little loud back there. And the next time it goes, hey guys, it's getting loud. And the third time, I get loud. And it sounds like this. That's it. I can't stand it anymore. Nobody make a sound until we get home. Alan, have you ever heard that in the car? Yes. You see, I try to be patient. I try to do my best to ask nicely, but at a certain point, I just can't stand that noise anymore. And I think we all reach that point in our own lives with different things. There's those little things and there's, that annoy us, and there's those big things that people do, and we just can't let go of them. But I think it's important for us to remember that we all make mistakes. But I also believe it would benefit us to remember that other people make mistakes as well. In our first scripture for today, we find, and we're told by the psalmist, that if God were to keep a constant tally of all the mistakes that we make, there is no one that would ever be able to stand before him. If we were to hold each and every time I lost my temper in the car against me, well, there would be no hope for me. But we are told further on in the scripture that there is forgiveness in him, a great steadfast love, a love that does not go away, and a great power to redeem, that will redeem all of Israel from all of their iniquities. Now throughout our journey to the cross this Lenten season, we have been focusing on the ideas of repentance and renewal. And these words of the psalmist that there is steadfast love from God that will redeem all our iniquities. That sure sounds renewing to me. A God that is willing to forgive my shortcomings, my mistakes and the things that I lack. One that is willing to do so not because of anything to deserve or earn that forgiveness, but simply because he loves me. That can renew the spirits of the people, even when we are at our lowest. Which brings us to our second scripture for today. We find the story of Jesus raising Lazarus from the dead. Now, I have found myself in some low places throughout my life, and I'm sure you have too. However, I've never found myself in the grave for days before I was renewed. And that is exactly where Lazarus found himself. As Jesus comes, after he's been called, after waiting a few days, knowing that Lazarus had been sick, he goes to the place where they have put Lazarus after he has died. Now, this was the common type of tomb that we see during this time, a cave-like structure with a stone that is rolled in front of it to seal it. They had prepared the body of Lazarus and wrapped him in cloth and placed him in the tomb and sealed it up. 
But Jesus calls to Lazarus, Lazarus, come out. And we see the miracle here. And we see how truly amazing it is, right? Jesus, uh, Lazarus does indeed come out. And he's wrapped in the cloths that he was buried in. And Jesus instructs others to remove them, just as he had asked them to remove the stone. See, from both of these scriptures today, we get a picture of a God that renews our spirits. A God that can raise us up from the lowest depths. A God whose grace is so wonderful that it conquers all our shortcomings, even death. What is it that we can do to earn this grace? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Thank you, Pastor. Whew. I'm glad I'm off the hook. I hear you loud and clear. I don't need to do anything. Thanks for the message this week and have a good week. Well, not so fast. <laughs> we do believe that there is a grace of God that goes before us in the Methodist Church and the Wesley uh, tradition. We call that prevenient grace, right? The grace of God that always goes before us. However, we believe that there are two other forms of grace. The next is sanctifying grace. For us to achieve that state of grace, there is a belief that is needed on our part. There is a faith that must be expressed. God's grace there is only possible if we believe in him. The psalmist expresses it today by simply stating it. There is a God full of forgiveness. Lazarus is freed from the, de from the dead because of the faith that Mary and Martha have to call upon Jesus to come to him. Okay, Pastor, got it. All I need to do is to believe and then I'm good. Have a good week. Again, not so fast. Yes, that is what we must do to receive sanctifying the sanctifying grace of God, but because we have been given that great gift, we should want to help others find it as well. We should want and need to help them to find God's forgiveness. To find that God that conquers death, that God that renews all things. And that is justifying grace. Our third state of grace. Now as I was studying this week and reading, one of the authors I came across pointed out something very interesting to me about the story of Lazarus. Something that I had never considered at all. There are two things that we almost always overlook when it comes to the story of Lazarus. We get so wrapped up in the miracle, right, that he was able to raise Lazarus from the dead because it's a pretty great miracle, right? So we really focus on that. But there are two things that Jesus does that give us an idea of why justifying grace is important. The first is that Jesus asks other people to remove the stone in front of Lazarus' grave. Do you think that Jesus was incapable of moving that stone himself? The second is he asks others to remove the burial cloths from Lazarus. Again, do you think he was unable to do so? Maybe you could make the argument the stone is very heavy and physically he might have needed help to move it. But the argument is not able to be applied to the burial cloth. He could have surely removed those from Lazarus himself. So why not just do both on his own? Why not cap off this amazing resurrection miracle that he is doing for Lazarus by acting like Superman and picking up that stone and just chucking it across the world? And then unraveling the cloth of Lazarus by grabbing one end and spinning them like in an old cartoon where they'd unspin a mummy, right? And he'd just spin around and then he, yeah, all the cloth would be off. Why not do it that way? Surely that would have been a grander way than asking the people there to do the work, right? <laughs> that would be fun to watch. But I think we can see that by asking others, Jesus is calling others into ministry here. See, he was calling people to do what they could to help. Lazarus rises from the dead. And they couldn't do that themselves. But they could help prepare the way for the one that could. 
They couldn't make him rise again, but they could help remove the things that were binding him so that he could walk again. And that is where I believe we are being called to in the church today. See, we can't save the souls of people like Christ, but we can help them come to him. We can try and remove the stones that are blocking their way, and we can do what we can to help them lose those things that are binding them. We can't forgive people of their iniquities like God can, but we can forgive them when they wrong us. You see, the grace of God is not something that we receive and hold on to for ourselves. It is something that we need to be taking to others and telling them about, helping them to see that they are capable of being renewed by Christ. Now, are we taking this message to the ones that, only, that we only deem as worthy? Well, my question for you then is, are you worthy of it? Is any of us worthy of the grace of God, or do we all fall short of the glory of God? Again, the psalmist tells us today, there, are, there is no one that could stand before him. So do we take the message of God's grace on to those that are thriving in life? Well, Jesus shows us that we take it to those that are so far down in the tomb that they feel that they are in the tomb already. We take the message of his grace to those that are already bound up by the terrible things in this world. We help them cut away those bindings the best that we can, and we let Jesus do the rest. We often talk about the need for a renewal in this world, a revival in this world, where we talk about it, but what are we going to do about it? See, there is a God that can renew everyone and everything, and we are his people. So let's take that message to everyone that we meet and watch how God can change things in this world. Amen. Amen. My challenge this week for you is a very simple one. I want you to tell one person about Jesus this week. Just one.